What's up guys, it's Amanda and I am just going to share with you some thoughts that I had about the YouTube artist community. So while I was in the shower yesterday, I was thinking about this phrase that I've heard and the phrase goes something like this. There's room for everyone at the finish line. And this phrase is meant to be empowering to groups of communities that have sort of kind of turned into more of a competitive environment like the YouTube beauty community. That's the, the phrase, that's where I'm pulling this phrase from, from the YouTube beauty community, which can be very cutthroat and very competitive and ironically very ugly at times. Um, but I was thinking of it in terms of the YouTube art community, which is arguably a lot smaller in comparison to some of the other big communities here on YouTube. And I don't think we have as many of the same demons as some of those bigger communities do. But that's not to say that we're perfect and everybody's happy and everyone's like, you know, happy-go-lucky all the time. It's not perfect. And I think that there can be sort of a flaw in this saying despite the fact that it's meant to be very positive and very empowering. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I know I've kind of been doing a lot more of these like chit chatty videos. Uh, if you don't like them, I'm sorry. Uh, sometimes I just have these thoughts and I want to share them with you guys and I want to make this a place where we can discuss these things and where I can just kind of share my thoughts with you guys and you can kind of react to them and share your thoughts with me as well. So. Is there room for everybody at the finish line? It's nice to think so, but at the same time, I think what that does is it's very limiting to the individual because it's assuming that we're all starting and ending at the same place. That we all started at the same point and that we all have the same end goal. And I just don't think that that's fair to each individual because each individual started on YouTube for a different reason. Yeah, you know, we're all at a different starting point and maybe I mean this can apply to generally any community or any field that you are in um, I'm just applying it to this as an example to most of you watching this video it's probably gonna make more sense that way so I mean we're all starting from different places so in terms of a marathon I mean what kind of marathon has everybody starting from a different point but ending at the same point like that doesn't make sense because somebody can be one foot from the finish line and somebody can be, you know, 100 miles from the finish line. But there's room for all of us there. But, you know, so I like this saying, but I just, I, I think that you have to look into it a little bit more to fully understand what it's trying to say. So when you're looking at the YouTube art community and you're looking at big art YouTubers like Bailey J, like Jelly Bee, like Lemmy Crescent, like those are like my goddesses, right? Like they top the trifecta in my <laughs> in my mind. They're really big YouTubers that I all really enjoy watching. I mean, there's tons, right? But they all have pretty big a pretty big subscriber count, and I don't really know if it's fair for smaller YouTubers. Even like I'm a very small YouTuber still. And there's, there's YouTubers that are even, I think, at 10,000 subscribers that are ultimately still considered small, right? And I don't know if it's really fair for us to compare ourselves to bigger YouTubers and say, oh, well, there's room for everybody at the finish line. Like, it can almost be self-defeating in a sense because you're looking at, like, somebody like me who has, like, 300 and something subscribers. And then someone like Baby J, who has over 500,000 subscribers and saying like, I'll get there someday. Like it's very self-defeating because you're still comparing yourself to somebody else at their point in their journey and not comparing yourself to where you were and where you are now. So I think instead of thinking of this phrase like a marathon, like everybody's starting from the same place and ending at the same place, think of it like it's just you. It's just your own race. It doesn't even have to be a race because there's no time restriction, right? Like, there's no one saying that there's a, a magic formula that you have to start your YouTube at this point and then at two years you have to be here and five years you have to be here. That's not how it works. So I think it's just fair to say that it's just you and how you started is unique to you. And 
how you progress along your journey and those steps and those milestones that you reach are unique to you. And nobody else is going to have the same experience as you. And so when you get to your finish line or your major goal, there's only room for you at that finish line. <laughs> there's not room for anybody else at your finish line because they didn't start where you started from and they didn't pass all of those obstacles that got you to where that, that goal is, right? So there's only going to be room for you at your finish line and there's only going to be room for somebody else at their finish line. You can never cross somebody else's finish line and they can never cross yours. And I think it makes more sense to look at it like that because then we stop comparing ourselves to everyone around us and saying, oh, well, this person had their channel at so many subscribers after a year or two years or whatever. Because that's not that's not how it works. I mean, Bailey J has a shit ton of subscribers, right? She has a huge following on YouTube. But she's also been doing it for a really, really long time. And she's worked her butt off to be where she is. So it's hard for somebody who's just starting out on YouTube to see and to understand all of the progress behind where she is now and all of the work that it took to get there because <laughs> time is a factor. I mean, you can't just start on YouTube and automatically, bam, you're successful. It, it requires a lot of consistency and a lot of time and effort just to get over the first hump of like, okay, here I am. And that's, I'm, I'm just still kind of getting there. So I'm not going to compare myself and be like, gosh, I really hope that's me one day. Like, no, I don't want to be the same, you know, I don't want my channel to be like somebody else's because why would somebody watch me when they can just go watch the original, right? So I want my channel to be unique and I want my journey to be unique and I want to take pride in that journey as being my own because if you don't, then all of the obstacles that you overcome are completely undermined. So <laughs> I hope that kind of makes sense. I, I, I just think that it's kind of an incomplete message saying there's room for everybody at the finish line kind of diminishes the importance of the starting line. So I hope that makes sense. I basically just want to say your journey is your own. Embrace it. Enjoy it revel in the difficulties and the successes and the failures that you have along the way and learn from them because they will ultimately be what make your channel your own. So that's kind of what I wanted to mention and then I also wanted to say just because you're running your own race and you're starting from your starting point and progressing towards your goal doesn't mean that you can't support other people running their own race and running and completing their own goals, right? So just because you're not all running the same race doesn't mean you can't cheer each other on. Just because you're working hard towards your own goals doesn't mean you can't cheer somebody else on while they're doing the same thing. We all have goals and we all have somewhere we're trying to get to ultimately. And so I think a lot of the time you guys see, if you see me comment on other people's videos, I'm like, I'm a real big supporter of other channels. <laughs> like. I, I like to be like the, the cheerleader. I like to comment on people's videos and be like, hey, great job, hey, this is awesome, you're doing like a great job, you're working really hard and it shows. And I don't have any ulterior motive when I do that. Basically, it's just me like trying to step outside of myself and see that that person's going through their own journey and their own hardships and how that can kind of suck sometimes when nobody is around to tell you like, hey, you're doing a great job. A lot of people get really defeated and I would hate to see that with some of the channels that I watch because I love their artwork. And just some examples, Miss Venomous Cupcake, I freaking love her, right? And I'm always commenting on like her Instagram posts, like blowing her up and like being like, hey, I love what you do. You're really great. Like <laughs> trying not to be creepy, but also like, yes, you know, that's me. That's I'm the same way with so many other YouTubers because I love what they do and I, I want to be there like when they, you know, I want to say that I started watching them when they were a small channel and then now they're this big huge channel and I saw how hard they worked, you know. None of that's like my accomplishment but it's really cool to see other people succeed too and it's all about karma, I mean it does come back to you. I have so many people that love and support my channel as well 
And again, it's not about ulterior motives. It's not like commenting on people's videos and being like, subscribe and I'll think about subscribing back maybe. It's so artificial, you guys. I worked really hard to make my channel a place of really genuine growth and it does take a really long time. But at the end of it, you actually have people cheering you on, right? If you have a thousand followers, but all of them were gained through like subscribe and I'll subscribe back, nobody's cheering you on at your finish line. Nobody, because all they're concerned about is themselves. Okay, so while it's completely fair to run your own race and work to your, towards your own goals, don't get too self-involved in your own journey. Like, build a community of people that you support and they support you, and you will get, honestly, I think the most out of this experience. And <laughs> ultimately, there should not be a finish line. There should not be like an end goal, right? It shouldn't be like, oh, I'm gonna have 100,000 subscribers and then just like retire and stop. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna create this one really hard piece that I've been working on and then be like, done. Like, there should never be an end goal, but there should always be like, bigger and bigger goals that you set for yourself and then smaller sub goals that l allow you to reasonably work up to those goals. I just like, I, I like to think of it more as we're each running our own race and we're each on our own journey trying to do our own thing. But at the same time, like this is a community for a reason and it's a social media network for a reason. Like build relationships, get to know people, like make friends, but don't get too caught up in the competitiveness of like, oh, who's gonna reach so many subscribers first or whatever, because it doesn't matter, right? It really doesn't matter. They're numbers. And the second that this becomes a numbers game, everybody loses. And it's like I said before, like, you're gonna have a thousand subscribers and not a single friend. That's not what you want. It's better to have a hundred subscribers or even 10 subscribers, but actually have people that care about you and what you do than a thousand strangers that just subscribed so you would subscribe back. Because that's shitty, right? And it's honestly my least favorite part about social media. And I've ranted about this before. I posted a picture on my Instagram a while back where I was like, if you want to follow me and then unfollow me because I don't follow you back, bye bitch. Like, <laughs> that was the gist of it. Like, you are not missed. I have wiped my hands of that. I don't dabble in that because I, it's just so artificial and it just drives me nuts. That's kind of all I had to say today. Um, so while I do really like the phrase, there's room for everybody at the finish line, I just think that there's more to it than that and it's just not fair to put everybody in the same category of like we're all starting here and we're all trying to get there because that's not the case for everybody. I mean, everyone joins YouTube for a different reason. Uh, for me, it was a great way to motivate myself to continue to do art, and it's also a great way for me to meet other like-minded people. So it's been, <laughs> it's been fun, and that's, that's what it should be. So that's pretty much all I had to say today. Sorry, this was kind of like a random, random video. I've been doing a lot of those lately though, so. The last thing that I wanted to mention was that I am looking into getting a webcam very soon. Thank you guys for your recommendations on my ballpoint pen challenge about like the software I should get and the webcams that I should get. I've been looking into it a lot, so hopefully I can start live streaming soon. I think I'm going to do my live streams on YouTube. Those are the ones that I personally enjoy watching the most because I just I just like the environment. Um, you see a lot of other people in the community kind of come together and I think that's really cool. So that's my plan. Um, yeah, that's, that's all. That's all I had to say. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below your thoughts on the phrase there's room for everybody at the finish line and what you think about it and also like if you have other suggestions of like chit chatty videos that I can do I'm open to it so yeah all right I will see you guys Friday with my artsy birthday Friday video follow week what was that <laughs>